I'm going to place the CPUs on my Mac Pro. I put some faster ones in, the 3.46 gigahertz processors. If you want to watch me do that and see how it's done, make sure you stick around. Right, let's open this thing up. I've got an anti-static strap here. I'll just stick that on. Just for, you know, for sake of completeness. This one's a bit tight, but anyway, that's what I've got. I've got another one somewhere, but this will do. Mommy, don't worry about it, but um, I'm going to be messing around with CPU, so you want to be a little bit more careful with that. Take the cover off. So here's the CPU tray. Just got to pop this out. This has been running, I've only just turned it off five minutes ago, so it's all nice and warm. But the CPU is only these heat sinks here. So this is what I need to work on. I've got to get down inside here and take these off. Now I think there are some plugs or something on there as well, some sockets to be careful of. So we'll see how we go with that. And I'll get this out of the way, we'll have a close look at these. Okay, it's all set up now. So I've got my 3mm wrench, this actually came with another CPU kit from another conversion I did on my other Mac Pro. That's a 2008 version, this is a 2010. So it's slightly different, but it's still a 3mm wrench. So thankfully, that'll just fit in there just nicely, just like that. I did read about this a while ago, about how to do it. So I'm just going to go and play it by ear and see how it go. Over here are the processors which are going in. Now, this is, what I, this is how they came. One's all nicely wrapped up. I've got them two different suppliers. And it's anti-static bag. Looks okay. This one came basically like this, wrapped up in bubble wrap with residue on the pins, which I've cleaned up. I've got to go over it with IPA and give it a clean up and remove the sticker that was in the middle. So this one's suspicious about being okay or not. It may or may not be. We have to see how we go with that. Let's get hooked back up again to the anti-static. Wireless anti-static strap. All the thing these days. It doesn't actually work. It's fake. <laughs> right. Let's see what we find in here. Trying to keep them even as I undo them if I can. They might be captive screws as well, I'm not sure. If they're captive, they might behave a bit differently. Let's get this one right here. I think it's popping up actually. Let's hope I don't find a problem. Can't be that long, surely. It's also possible one spinning. There we go, that's out. Right. So there's the heatsink compound that's on there. And on the CPU. And there's the socket you've got to be careful of as well. And there's a fan in there, which I might try and take out and give a clean if I can. How easy is it to get out of there? Might be wrong, but I'll shove a brush down there and give it a clean up whilst it's off. But you have to be careful, you've got to watch out for this heat sink here, this thermal pad. Don't lose that. Um, that's kind of important because it heats, cools down some parts on the back there as well, it's also any cooling. And don't mix them up either. Let's do the next one. And get onto the screw, it's there somewhere. There we go. There's a bit of fluff in there as well, that sort of stuff's got to come out. It's not too bad under there, but these are captive screws, so you have to kind of undo them a little bit at a time, otherwise they'll go a bit wonky. Technically, you should go diagonally all the time, but you know, for tightening, it's very important. Not so much for loosening. Just trying to keep them even. They're not that long, so it shouldn't be that bad. They are like sprung and captive at the same time. Put this one next. Set one out.
I think we're nearly there. Is that it? Not quite. I thought that one was out, maybe it isn't. This is going to plenty make absolutely sure. Right, there's probably a connector at this end as well. Yes, there is. And there we go. So that's that one, so look at that fan. It's also a little bit dirty, so I might have to see what's involved about getting those out. I think they're just pushed in now, so you probably can just pop them out. We'll look at that. Right, so there's the other CPU. So I'll give this board a clean up as well, get the dust off it. And that sort of stuff too, before I put it all apart. I'll do that before I take those CPUs out. So I'm going to go away, give us a brush down, and um, get all the dust off it, then I'll take the CPUs out. Don't need any bits of debris getting onto the pins on the board, because that'd be bad. So I've got to turn the air conditioning on, it's getting too hot in here again. Right, well, let's give this a clean up here. I'm just going to use a bit of tissue, because it's quite dry, this stuff. It's actually dried out quite a lot. And this is a uh, 2010 machine, so it's nine years old now. So, you know, it's an ageing thing, it all does dry out. Let's just give it a brush around in there. Get some of the worst dust out from inside that bit. And also dust inside that fan, which I'm going to try and get into. I won't do that on camera. I'll do that now, actually. Okay, let's give it a bit of IPR in here. So you see things up a little bit more. Don't want any rubbish on there. Yeah, it's nice. Let's do the other one. And I've already done the top of this chip here. It's going to do the uh, bit of IPR on that one. This is obviously the one's got to come out. This one here, I've not actually taken much of the crud off it. I was going to do it on camera because it's quite thick and it is a bit dry, as I said. I'm just going to get it off. Get this off here. Try and get it out. I'll try and get it onto the tissue rather than onto the frame. It's a bit of a pain, this one. It does tend to be quite messy. Anyway, so these are 2.93 gigahertz processors, so in themselves they're not exactly slouches, but um, they're not exactly doing what I want either. I'm just going to try and clear something as I can before I take them out. I don't want stuff going everywhere. It's easy while it's all captive. Right, I think that's pretty much it. Still a little bit in there that I can't do that right now. Right, so let's pull these processors out, swap in the new ones, and uh, make a note which one's which. I'm going to put the suspect one in this side, just in case the problem at least I know which one it is. And I'll put the one which I think is probably going to be okay in the right hand side. Put the processor out. Try and let it straight up, don't try and go sideways with it or anything like that, otherwise, you could damage these really fragile pins that are inside here. Never ever touch them, don't do anything with them ever. They're very fragile. So the corner marking is facing that corner there. Your arrow. So let's put it down there. Put this chip. Find the corner marking of this one. I put a little cross in it as well just to help me identify which one it is. Drop that in there. Again, try and keep it straight. It's got a little uh, locator pin here anyway. So you can't put them in backwards or sideways or anything. Right, slash that one down. That's that one done. Now I'll do the other one. Let's get a little bit closer. Right, so the spring's really powerful, coming as high as the What is that? Okay, now, don't touch the pads if you can avoid it. Right? Don't try not to do your best not to touch them, I need to handle it by the edges. I really need to find a, um, a package to put these things into. And let's get this one out of this little bag. We'll have a look just to make sure there's no residue on the pins or on the pads. It's looking good. This one goes the other way around. So the little corner was on this way. Like that instead. So opposite direction, so one goes that way, one comes this way. Right, so that's located. Just 
definitely in there nice. Drop that down, put the lever down. That's it. CPU in. Now what I'll do is give these a clean up as well before I actually put any more thermal compound on them. Now these actually came with some thermal compound which I'm suspicious of using. I do have my own stuff which I'm actually more inclined to use which is um, Electrolube. Basically it's Electrolube stuff anyway. I've got it somewhere, this is not the full tube, this is just the top up tube. But what they actually came with is this stuff which I'm suspicious of. CP Cooler used Hainzai made in China. This is what came with it. This is what came with one, this is what came with the other one. It's the same stuff. So, do I trust that the Chinese are supplying the stuff they should be using with it? Or should I trust that the stuff I've got is going to be good enough? I'm going to go with mine. I don't trust the Chinese stuff. It might be fine, it might be really good stuff, I really don't know. In fact, wait, I'm going to go and research this. Okay, a short bit of research later and there's not much information on it. Um, generally they're just considered untrustworthy. I'm going to go with my Electrolube, which I know is, is a decent brand, it's been around for decades. So I'm going to use that. So I've put some thermal compound on these two ICs. I've spread it out because that's my preferred method, is to spread it because then you know, definitely know you definitely have a contact area across it. Now my other stuff actually ran out so I had to get my other one, which is, this is actually what I'm using here. It's Electrolube HTC. So it's a good brand. Here's the box for it in case you're interested. Right, let's put this all back together. Let's try and get this lined up as well. So it's got a connector you've got to line up first. Try to find. And once that's lined up, you should be able to just push it into place. I'm pretty sure it's going in. Yeah, it's going in. Right. Let's do diagonals. Not tightening right down yet, I'm just trying to get it in place. Then I'll tighten it down. Probably it's like a torque reading you're supposed to use or something. Probably it's like some kind of torque setting you're supposed to have. I've got no idea what that would be. Right, that's tight. Tight. This one should have been close actually. Okay, it's that one. Let's do the other one. Got to line up the plug with the plug. That's the first thing you've got to do. And then you can put it in place. That. Down or not? I'm not sure it's actually going down, is it? Come on. Is it going in? Yep, it's going in now. Okay. Tight. 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 Okay. That should all be nicely bedded down now. Let's just double check and have a look underneath. Make sure it looks correct. Just in case something's gone wonky or sat a bit funny or something like that. Yeah, that's looking okay, if it's square, if it's like a sitting down like it's supposed to, so I think we're good there. Let's put it back in the computer. Here we go, slide it back in. That should 
slot in and then lock just like that right I really hope this works now I did do a comparison well I plan to do a comparison for encoding times so the idea there is that I've encoded a video it took 34 minutes 13 seconds I'm going to do exactly the same encoding, exactly the same video, nothing different. I'm going to see what the timing ends up being. We'll do a comparison, assuming of course it works. Let's find out in a minute. Okay, so there you go. This is the result. Dual processor, 3.46 GHz, 6 core Intel Xeon. So here we go. It worked fine. So excellent. Can't exactly complain about that. Of course, it's, um, it may have a processor issue where it may glitch. Who knows? I haven't done any kind of stress tests on it. I'll do that shortly when I do a video encoding, but so far it's looking promising. Okay, so this finished encoding and it took 29 minutes 17 seconds. The previous version was 34 minutes and 13 seconds. So it was actually almost 5 minutes faster, which is not a bad improvement. That's great. So if I'm doing a long video, it could actually save me 10 minutes. Excellent. Well worth doing. Well, that's got some power behind our spring. <laughs> Put some on here. Nice big blob. Probably a bit too much actually. Uh, come on. It decided to unblock at the same time. That's helpful. Just trying to suck some back in. Oh, this is no, it's way too much there. Way too much. Come on. Suck some back in. It's not sucking back in very well. Anyway, I'll sort this mess out. There's way too much on there. I need to transfer some to this one.